Hey y'all, my name is Priscilla and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a TBR for you for the middle grade magic readathon. So the middle grade magic readathon is a readathon taking place from July 14th to the 24th. So hopefully if I get this TBR up in time, that will be starting this weekend. So I love middle grade. Some of my favorite reads this year already have been middle grade. So when I saw that this readathon was being hosted and um, focuses on dismantling the misconceptions surrounding middle grade, I knew that I really wanted to participate. This is also a good chance for me to pick up some middle grades that I have been putting off for a while. So I will have all the information you could possibly want to know in the description box below. The challenges are very detailed and I love them, but I don't wanna paraphrase and misconstrue those. So check that out, check out all the hosts recommendation videos. Those are all great as well. And let's just go on and talk about my TBR. So the first books that I have that I'm going to be reading were actually recommended by Yvette in her recommendations video. The first book that I have is Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee. So this was described to me as epic sci-fi that is written from a trans Korean author. Uh, our main character Min is a 13 year old girl that is from a family that has fox magic, uh, fox spirits and her brother is kind of her idol she wants to be just like him he's in the military and it is rumored that he has left his post to search for the dragon pearl which min does not believe is true she thinks that that is not something that he would do so she goes on this adventure to find him and the dragon pearl so this book covers a number of challenges so i think that it's probably going to be my main priority for this readathon so the first being find your myth which is to pick a middle grade that is from your favorite genre my favorite genre is sci-fi and i don't really think of epic sci-fi when I think of middle grade like Yvette mentioned in her video. So this could also uh, fit the bend the rules challenge because I don't think of that when I think of middle grade. This will also cover the boosting voices challenge because the author is Korean. And also I think Yvette mentioned that there are some themes of death, maybe grief in this. So that is not always um, thought of in middle grade. This middle grade is not all sugar and spice so it covers that challenge as well. The next book that I have is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. So this is a nonfiction memoir written in verse by a black author who usually writes children's books and picture books. This I think is about uh, Jacqueline Woodson growing up in Ohio, moving to Brooklyn, finding her love and passion of writing and also growing up with the remnants of uh, Jim Crow and she was uh, raised I think in the 60s and 70s so just understanding some of the civil rights movement that was happening at the time as well. This is a book that I meant to pick up a long time ago. I actually did try to pick up the audiobook and I just wasn't really in the headspace for that book and I knew that it was something that I really wanted to give my full attention to so I put it on hold for a while and I really want to read it now. So this will cover the challenges of, I think, bend the rules because I usually don't think of nonfiction memoirs when I think of middle grade. That's another um, high uh, book off my TBR. Okay, so the next book that I have to talk about is Zenobia July by Lisa Bunker. So this is a contemporary story that follows a trans girl that has just moved to Maine and is starting a new life with her aunts. There is a bit of a mystery involved here. Zenobia is a computer hacker and she finds out that there's some hate memes being spread on her new school's website and she wants to find out how to help. So this was an immediate addition to my TBR after Adriana over at Perpetual Pages mentioned it on their channel, I believe in their MB book tag. I'll make sure to link that down below. But um, it just sounded like something that I had never heard about in middle grade. Uh, I have read trans stories in middle grade before, but uh, something about this just really gripped me and intrigued me. So this would definitely cover the challenges of Sugar and Spice because it does deal with some pretty heavy themes of um, transphobia and cyberbullying with the LGBT rep in here. And I believe I'm gonna be tentatively counting this as boosting voices because I think this is on voices for the trans rep, but I will verify that and let you know. 
And my next pick is called The First Rule of Punk by Celia Perez. So this is a contemporary Latinx story that is from a debut author that is notorious for being a zine maker and just a badass librarian. I put this on my TBR first when Andrea over at Book Ramble mentioned it in a video. She featured three Latinx middle grade stories, which is a really great video. So I'll make sure to link that below and in other places for you to check out. So this follows a 12 year old named Malu from Florida who is moving to Chicago with her mother who is a professor and has recently gotten gotten a job there. Her parents are divorced, her dad owns a record shop and loves punk music. So she's a bit of a rebel because she idolizes her dad and loves punk music as well. And when she moves to a new place, she finds out that there are Latinx punk musicians and that kind of blows her mind, I think, and she never knew that she could be both Mexican and a rebel at the same time. So uh, her mother being an academic is just really trying to uh, instill a love of Mexican culture in her and she doesn't really understand why because she feels a disconnect from that culture being in the United States being Mexican American. And I think this is just a story that's going to be about um, finding a love of uh, that identity of that part of yourself along with what you already love and what other people are already doing um, with other things that you love. So this will count for two challenges, one being boosting voices because it is own voices for the Latinx uh, story representation and also for reader's choice because I really wanted to read some middle grade that was Latinx. There are five challenges for this readathon, so I'm being very ambitious and putting five books on my TBR. The next book is called The Moon Within and it is by Aida Salazar. So this is a contemporary Latinx story that is written in verse. It has a beautiful cover. I lied in my mid-year book freak out tag saying that I didn't have a beautiful cover that I bought this year. I definitely bought this this year and I think it is beautiful. So this is a debut that surrounds a traditional ceremony in Mexica culture, I believe, which is an indigenous tradition moon ceremony. And this ceremony takes place when your first period arrives. So it's sort of a uh, tradition in uh, transitioning from girlhood to womanhood. And this just sounds like a coming of age story that is very reminiscent of one of my favorite childhood stories, but of course, obviously with a focus on Latinx traditions. So I'm really excited for this and I hope that it really works for me and that I can gush about it in a later video. So of course, this will count for the boosting voices challenge of being owned voices and also for the find your choice challenge because I wanted to read middle grade from Let's Next Authors. Well, that is my TBR for the middle grade magic readathon. Uh, please let me know in the comments down below if there are any middle grades that you saw in this video that maybe you want to read now or that you've had your eye on. Uh, if you have any recommendations for middle grade graphic novels, I would love to have them because I usually like to have a graphic novel going at some point or on deck. Please leave those down below. I would love to have some more graphic novel recommendations. Um, but I think that's all I have for this video. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.